Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to five ways British and American college life is very different. This is one that I feel like will probably be a lot more similar than, for example, US and UK schools because I feel like, well, university, which is obviously what we call university, that's what Americans call college, um, is just the place where I guess students will travel from around the country to then live for a few years to study or people from around the world, to be fair. Like the college in my, oh sorry, the university in my city is very, very diverse. You get a lot of people from different backgrounds traveling from all kinds of countries. Usually it's from like East Asia, which is really interesting. But um, it makes up for a, a big mixture of people in the, in the university or in the college. And yeah, I assume that's probably a similar case with the US. But I feel like the difference would be in the US, I feel like campuses are probably just much bigger. That's probably the main one. Like, I feel like a much higher percentage of people will um, live on the campus compared to the UK. Although it could differ from um, university to university. But we're going to check this out. Hopefully going to enjoy. And let's learn a bit about these, these differences. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos pertains to university. Or as it's known in America college <laughs> and you might be thinking Lawrence it must have been a long time ago since you were at university why didn't you make this video when you were still in your early 20s and my answer to that is simple YouTube didn't exist yet and the other reason that it's taken me this long is that I am incredibly lazy just like I was when I was a student and when I was a student I attended Lancaster University on the west coast of England and I didn't know it yet but it was there that two things happened that would prove very relevant to this video number one I developed a pretty robust understanding of the sort of general university life in England and number two longtime subscribers will know that it was at university that I met my now American oh. wife and oh so his American wife went to the university of Lancaster. That's pretty cool. And if you yourself are not yet subscribed to this channel, do that now. In the meantime, I'm going to turn into an American college bro with a British <laughs> accent and talk about all of the ways oh that British God. and American colleges are very different. <laughs> We cannot talk about this topic without first talking about some of the ways that university terms differ on either side of the pond. As I've already pointed out, institutions of higher education are usually known as university in the UK and college in America. That said, individual American colleges like, say, Harvard or Yale do contain the word university. And the reverse is sometimes true in Britain, as evidenced by the likes of Imperial College London. But those um. two terms get even more confusing when you consider the fact that firstly in Britain college is where we do our sixth form education between the ages of 16 and 18 but it doesn't end there because Americans what do you call the place on campus where students reside this is usually known as dorms short for dormitories and in Britain that word is usually reserved for things like boarding school where you've got like a number of people in one room in a university context we might refer to that as halls of residence or this is where it gets confusing halls, yeah. college for instance my dorm room was in Grisdale College within Lancaster University, which had several other colleges. We'll get onto those in a bit. Oh, in damn. both countries, an academic year is broken up into sections. And those sections in this country, as in the United States, are known as semesters. However, in Britain, the term for this is term. Half and to term. this day, I... Term, half term, all that sort of stuff. That you get usually get half term breaks for like, things like Halloween and Christmas. Probably You probably get the exact same... Um, half terms or semesters as we get to be honest but I often hear americans talk about majoring in a subject that's a term you don't really hear in the uk like americans one of our alternative terms might be to study a subject majoring is this is the the u.s way of saying study in the uk Maybe in the US you just say both. Or to do a subject. I did English. Or, and this one's slightly more archaic these days, I read English. And finally, while British people use the word brilliant to mean something is amazing, Americans might apply it to a student who is particularly gifted. And as it happens, both definitions can be applied to users of today's sponsor, Ooh. which also bears the name brilliant. He secure the bag again. You'd love to see that. Let's see his little, um the discount that he's gonna give. In the pond, you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. The link is in my description below. 
For me, it's been almost a quarter of a century, but I can just about remember the application process for selecting the university <coughs> that I wanted to go to. This was done through a body called UCAS, and yeah, through UCAS- That's still the same. You apply to five universities in the subject that you want to study. So in my case, that was English language, and I applied to Wolverhampton, Edge Hill, Sheffield, York, and Lancaster. York rejected me, even though I got the grades they wanted, and Lancaster accepted me, so I know who I would side with in the war of the roses. <laughs> In the US, this application process is slightly different. I was talking to my wife about it this morning, and she said that you could apply to as many colleges as you want. The only thing with that is there is a fee attached, which seems to vary from university to university. I should note that this is also true in the UK. I didn't remember that part because my parents probably paid for it. But the point is, if you are really loaded, I suppose you improve your chances of getting approved. But the other thing that she said to me that I don't think I knew until researching this video was that you don't necessarily have to determine there and then what it is you want to study. Now this will depend on the college, but at some, it turns out, you can just say, I haven't decided yet, or I'm undecided. And I'll just, I'll wing it. I'll figure it out as the year progresses, which brings us on quite neatly to this. That's right, the academic portion of university. The academic side of things is vastly different from one country to the other. Firstly, there's the timeline. I finished and started my undergraduate degree in three years. And that's not because I'm some sort of gifted child. That's just how it is. It's typically three years for most courses. Child, although mum, if you want to confirm in the comments. It's also because that's just the norm for most non-scientific degrees in the UK. But from those American friends or girlfriends of young dashing Lawrence, I discovered that the norm in America is four years. And at first I couldn't wrap my head around why it took an extra year just to learn shit. And I suppose it's because in America, during that first year particularly, they take other classes, often general studies, that have nothing to do with the major. In fact, that major could what? and often does change. In fact, according to most estimates, at least a third of US students change their major at least once. In the UK, there is less flexibility around this because, well, our choice of major is declared during the application phase and plays a big part in the university's decision to accept us. In Britain, for all three years, you focus on your major and maybe some minor as well. For example, I did linguistics and creative writing. And my grades looked a lot different to those of my wife, and not just because she tried harder. You see, while an A grade, or a first, is anything above 70% in the UK, American undergraduates must achieve 90% or above to attain the same. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Why is that? Well, I guess B is like 80 to 89%. Grade at the other end. A D? Is a 60 to 69 percent okay? What is going on? Are the questions harder in the UK or the other? Well, I guess if it's if it's an exam, god, I was stuttering a lot there. If oh, for god's sake, if it's an exam, this percentage is how it would be, but then I guess also grading standards for like essays and reports and stuff that is mad. Damn end of the spectrum, anything below 60% will earn you a fail in the US, while British students can still pass with a score as low as 40. And you might be thinking, ooh, Lawrence, does this mean that grades are earned differently in each country? And the answer to that is yes. While the final grade for a US undergraduate hangs on their grade point average, or GPA, the fate of British undergraduates is determined by their performance in end of year exams, as well as their dissertation. I'm also under the impression that in the UK we have more lectures than American students might be used to, which is why I slept through half of my degree. That said, it's not the only reason. That's right, the other reason that I found myself waking up at 2pm was campus culture. That is, all of the things that embody the social aspects of university life. In Britain, these centre around a couple of things, one of which is drinking. Now, bear in mind that in the UK, the legal drinking age is 18. So when you get to university, even in your first week, which is known as Freshers' Week, you not only get absolutely bladdered, if you are the sort of person that drinks alcohol, but it's encouraged by the student union, because everyone <laughs> does it. It's legal. Legal, there's no God problem. Damn. This I found to not be true in America, where of course students drink. But remember that half the students, the younger half, are 
underage. And under those circumstances, it's sort of hard to market your on-campus events and things like that as an opportunity to get drunk. Now, <laughs> that might be a good thing because I remember during my own Freshers' Week, I got absolutely rat assed every night. And when I was at university, drinking seemed to fuel a lot of the inter-college rivalries. Like the Grisdale College people really didn't like the Pendle College people. And so if one person drank enough tequila and the wind blew in a weird direction, another person might have their trousers pulled down just because they happen to belong to different accommodation. Now, thankfully, you don't encounter that specific issue in the US very much, but I could be wrong because I never attended an American university, but there does seem to be a little bit of a rivalry that emerges between these Greek sororities and or fraternities. And students that what? belong to these will talk about Greek life which is not a magazine about Athens, but it's sort of a collective term for all of these sororities and fraternities because their names all contain Greek letters. And this concept right. was all Greek to me because in Britain we don't have this. But these groups in US colleges get together and sort of talk about leadership skills and academia and other stuff that I've never yet been privy to because I've never attended one of these things. I just imagine that these are sort of future world leaders plotting to take over the world by turning everybody into a mouse. I'm sure it's not quite as sinister as that and I understand that members of these organizations are members for life. So it makes me wonder, do members meet up when they're like 60 years old and have a reunion? Or do you just do it for the first few years after graduation and then eventually lose touch like I did with all of my friends? Damn. <laughs> when I was a sports culture, this won't be a comparison to be honest. I mean, we know the US sports culture in college is like, uh, this, yeah, it's just not comparable because it's just this whole entity. In the UK, I wouldn't really say there necessarily is a, a sports culture. I mean, there's like gyms and stuff, and maybe for like cricket or rugby, possibly at universities, but. Other than that, I wouldn't say there really is a sports culture. At university in England, there were two ways that you could tell who was an American student. Number one, how they pronounce everything. And number two, they like to wear sweaters and or hoodies denoting the university from whence they came. And I think this is a big difference between British and American students. It's not that yeah. we can't buy regalia pointing out our university. It's just that it's not such a big deal to us. And it's not no. a case that Americans happen to be part of alumni programs like my wife is and that the British somehow aren't because we are. I get these magazines, or at least I used to until they started making me feel old. It's that America puts much more of a national focus focus on university sports teams than we do in Britain. So if there's a major event on, like the college basketball tournament that happens every March, people who March graduated madness. from the university that happened to make it to the final and sports harder than the other team, get to cheer for that. We don't have anything equivalent to that in the UK except the Cambridge versus Oxford rowing. And most <laughs> of us didn't go to Cambridge. I don't know about this, I can't lie. Oxford, and most of us don't know how to row. So we have no real need to maintain this strong affiliation with our university once we leave. Well, there we go. And so in conclusion to a video into which I put more effort than most of my university essays, I would say that that tells you a lot about how bad those essays were. <laughs> if you've been to college and- Well, there we go. Um, I feel like you could do a video on this stuff and make a load more comparisons, right? But dorms in the US can also be called residence halls. In the US, your grades determine your GPA, but to acquire your grades, you have to pass your exams. Dissertations are only required for master's degrees. Well, I'm jealous about that, I can't lie. Because dissertations are... <laughs> they are not fun, if we're going to be honest. Um, US universities are supposed to have more than one school or college, such as a school of music, college of liberal arts, school of business, etc. But as you said, we all refer to it as going to college. Well, there we go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this reaction. If you if you're from the US and you've gone to a British college or um, university, let me know your experiences and I guess vice versa if you're British and you've gone to an American one, let me know. Cuz there's like um what is it called? Y year abroad. Like so you'll be studying in the US but then you'll get a year abroad and let's just say you studied in the UK. Let me know your personal comparisons cuz I guess if you've actually personally experienced it, that's when you'll know the full on differences, but Hopefully you guys enjoyed and until next time I subscribe and peace.